Hey guys, welcome to Chris's Clock Shop. So I've got a situation here with this uh, eight day cuckoo clock. You'll notice the weight on the left hand side which drives the music box is significantly higher than the other two and that's because the music box is jamming. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to properly adjust your cuckoo clock music box so that it's uh, driving properly and you don't have this problem. And this is a side mounted cuckoo music box. So here I've got a side mounted cuckoo clock music box that I'm going to put into proper adjustment. Key points uh, to look at in our adjustment <clears throat> is the stop pin that goes into the hole on the music roll. The shoulder screw and the elongated slot in this drop lever. And then this silver piece, which is adjustable and tightened down with the screw onto the comb. All right, so I've got this screw loose. Okay, it's just snug on there. So if I was to move move it up and down okay well maybe it's too snug to move easily here but if I was to loosen the screw a bit okay you see my whole assembly here moves okay so I want to first position this assembly this drop lever uh, such that number one my music roll Okay, my music roll has two, uh, two drops in it, two holes in it. So if I lift this out and I let my music go, so I want to get it to where. It finished the whole tune. And I actually want to get it so it's in the center of the dead portion of the music roll. In other words, there's no pins. Okay, I'm going to go to the next hole so you can see what I'm talking about. Here. You'll see on the music roll, right across here, there are no pins, okay? And that's the, uh, so you want the comb, when it stops, when that stop pin is inside this hole, you want the comb in the center of that row where there's no pins. All right, so I'm going to go to the next So it's in about the center of the area of the music roll that has no pins. And that's where I want uh, to be when making this adjustment. And what I want to do is I want to position this silver piece and then tighten down that screw on the comb such that the stop pin in the hole is tight against the top of the hole on the music roll, but still leaves some space in that elongated slot above the shoulder screw. Okay, so there, right now, if I look straight at it, I see that there's room in the slot above the shoulder screw, shown here. All right, but I want a little less than that. So I'm going to reposition this piece. So you'll see that uh, when I move this piece, the gap between the shoulder screw and the elongated hole 
is going to change. Okay, you see it there? And this adjustment can be a little tricky. Might take you a few times to get it just right. It does move rather easily. So uh, take your time. Make sure you get it um, so that the there's a little bit of space above the shoulder screw in that elongated slot. All right, and that's what we're looking for. So now that I've got it in the correct position, I'm gonna tighten down the screw holding the silver piece onto the comb. And I'm gonna hold that silver piece pretty tight with my left hand just to ensure it doesn't move during the tightening process. All right, so you might wanna get it snug before you do that final turn. The fly needs to be stopped by the little plastic tubing on this extended arm here, on this lever mechanism. All right, and it actually was missing on this clock, and I installed that tubing. Okay, so the fly here needs to stop on this tubing in this position. So right now it's not, so I'm gonna bring it down And we'll see missing. So I'm going to bring it down some more. As the fly goes around, it is stopping on that piece, but just barely. Okay. So now. In that position, I've got my stop pin at the top of this hole on the music roll. I've got this screw tightened down, and I've got some room in this elongated hole for this to travel. Okay, I might even have too much. We'll see. So now what I'm going to do is... I want to make sure that when I push down on this piece that it pops out onto the music roll and doesn't go back in the hole. And now we're going to go around. We're going to make sure that that stop pin drops in the hole and the fly is stopped by the plastic tubing and it's not locking on the music roll. Rather, it's being the music roll is stopped by the plastic tubing on the fly. Okay, and it is, as you see there, just barely, but, and as you see in the music roll, the stop pin is in the center. If the adjustment is not correct and you don't have that space in the elongated slot, when the clock goes to actuate the uh, lever and try to push this down, it won't be strong enough to overcome the resistance because that shoulder screw will bottom out at the top of that elongated screw and the music roll will actually pull that lever down as it rolls. So right now the position, it's in the locked position, but as you can see, the teeth of my comb have not finished the song and are about to be struck by the pins. So I actually want the um, music roll to advance a little bit further. So to do that, I'm going to lift up my plastic tubing a bit so I can let it go a little bit more. So I'm going to set this down. Lift up this plastic tubing a bit and now I'm going to see if it'll finish the song and just a hair more 
It hasn't quite finished the song. Okay. But now what's happening is, you see, my stop pin is, looks like it's, it could be locking on the music roll instead of the fly. But it's not. It actually stopped on the fly. So I'm just going to advance this... Uh, plastic tubing up just a hair more and we're going to see where we're at here okay so now finish the song and the plastic is stopping the fly if you find this lever is too hard to push down the clock won't actuate it it's because your music roll advanced your lever so that it bottoms out on that shoulder pin and you don't have enough space in that elongated screw and it's still being stopped on the, the fly so we're good on that yay so it finished the song none of the teeth of the comb are being plucked and the plastic piece stopped the fly, and the stop pin is inside the music roll hole. And <clears throat> as long as when I push on this top piece to actuate it, it comes out of that hole um, it easily and is not being jammed on the music roll hole, we should be good with this adjustment. That all seems to be pretty good. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten down the screw on the comb. I wanna make sure that's good and tight. Nothing's gonna move on me. Okay, now we're going to test it again, just make sure everything's working properly. Okay, so that's how you put a side-mounted cuckoo clock music box in proper adjustment so that it plays properly. Okay, so I'd like to reiterate what will happen if you don't have this adjusted properly. So if you find that your wire is just kind of bouncing on that uh, lever and it's not strong enough to actuate the music box, the reason for that is because your stop pin is being advanced further by the music roll to until that elongated slot bottoms out on that shoulder pin instead of being stopped by the fly. So it's that that uh, the music is being stopped by the elongated slot instead of the plastic piece on the fly, and you'll have that problem where your clock won't be able to actually release the music so that it plays. So I'm going to throw this into the case and. Uh set it all up and make sure it's running properly. Oh, one other thing I should mention is that just because there's two holes in this music box and there's two tunes, that does not automatically mean the clock is supposed to strike on the half hour and the hour. In fact, the only way to verify whether or not it's supposed to strike on both the half hour and the hour, or just the hour, is to put it in the clock and let it run um, so that it's either striking on both the half hour and the hour, and you see if the weight stays even with the time and strike weights. 
if it's um, going down much further, faster than the other two, then you know it's only supposed to strike on the hour. And vice versa, if you set it up so it's striking on the hour only, and you find that the weight is um, lagging behind the strike and the time, that means it's supposed to go off on the half hour and the hour. And on this particular clock, I've already had it running in the case, only goes off on the hour, okay? So this is a case where even though there's two tunes, still only plays on the hour. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Here's my music box in the clock. Get it ticking. And uh, I'm just gonna indicate what we're looking at here. So this wire is going to catch the fly when the clock is striking. So there's a second wire. You can't see it in this picture, so I'm going to move the camera slightly. There it is up here. This is the wire that actuates the the stopping lever, okay, that we just adjusted. This wire is going to go further down on the hour than on the half hour. So on this clock on the half hour, it's not going to go down far enough to actuate or lift this out of the stop pin out of the music roll. However, if it does, I just need to adjust the wire so that it doesn't because this clock only strikes on the hour. But some clocks are going to strike on both half hour and hour. So you just have to watch the weight to figure out what is the case for your clock. So here you'll see that the fly currently is stopped by the plastic tubing attached to the arm on this stopping lever. And it's not being stopped by the music roll itself. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move the hand on the front of the clock to the hour and you'll see that it's going to start moving those wires down and you'll see that this wire is in position to catch the fly when the clock warns and goes into striking and this wire is about to lift the stop pin out of the music roll as shown here. So in warning, the fly is now caught by the lower wire. The pin is now out of the music roll and the spring here is what caused it to move out of the hole. And again, the plastic tubing here is stopping the fly not the music roll. Okay guys, thanks for watching.